Hello everyone, my name is Heming. I'm a UFT1 support agent from OpenText customer care team. Today, I'm glad to share with you details of how UFT1 identifies a test object and where to configure the object identification settings. Let's take a look at how UFT learns a test object. It starts by determining the test object class. For example, if it is a button on the web page, it is recognized as a web button. If it is an input field in a Java application, it is recognized as a Java edit. We have a large set of predefined test object classes that help to distinguish the nature of a test object. Then UFT learns mandatory description properties to uniquely identify a test object among all objects in the application under test. If mandatory properties are not sufficient, UFT learns assistive properties too. And if that is still insufficient, UFT learns the ordinal identifier for that test object. Along with the nature of the object, UFT1 also learns the test object hierarchy. So a web list is stored in the hierarchy of browser, page, and web list. What are the mechanisms that UFT1 uses to identify an object and how do they work with each other? UFT1 first tries with description properties. Description properties are a predefined set of properties for UFT to uniquely identify an object. Most of the time, using description properties is sufficient in finding the target test object. If description properties finds more than one object, visual relation identifiers kicks in to help with object identification if it is configured. Visual relation identifiers are a set of definitions that enable finding an object based on the relative location of its neighboring objects. It's an enhanced mechanism to cover some scenarios where ordinal identifiers are unreliable. If the above two mechanisms fail to identify an object, smart identification is then triggered if it's enabled. Smart identification works with base and optional filters. It is a more complex but flexible mechanism. And finally, if it is still multiple objects being found, ordinal identifier is used as UFT1's last attempt to identify an object. Ordino identifier works together with description properties, but it's disabled if VRI or visual relation identifiers is configured. UFT1's predefined object identification settings can be changed at test object class level. It is available from tools object identification manual option. This is a test object class level setting, and it impacts how UFT learns a test object into object repository. In the snapshot on the right, we have an example of a web button object class. Here you can see you can add, remove, or even create your custom mandatory and assistive description properties. And in the middle, there is the smart identification section where you can configure if UFT1 learns smart identification filters and how smart identification works. And lastly, you can also choose which ordinal identifier to be used when UFT learns a test object. It can be either index or it can be location. You can also fine tune object identification for a specific test object that is already added into the object repository. On the right is a snapshot for a web list object in the object repository. We can see that it has four description properties, row, name, HTML tag, and ACC name, which are learned when UFT1 adds the object into a repository. You can click the add or delete button to add helpful properties or remove unnecessary ones. Then you can also see the visual relation identifier or VRI in short section, 
This is where you can configure VRI for a test object to be more reliably recognized. And then we have the Arduino identifier section for you to configure the type and value of Arduino identifier being used. And if smart identification is enabled for the test object class, but somehow you, know, you do not want it for a certain object, you can always disable it here in the smart identification section. Please note, if smart identification is disabled for the test object class, you won't be able to enable it for a specific test object simply because UFT1 has not learned the smart filters when the object is added. I hope this short video helps you understand how UFT identifies an object and what you can do to configure the object identification settings in UFT1. Thank you for watching.